Here's a glimpse of my life. Lavish holidays in Mabea. Up there, you see my dad and I, in a nice restaurant. My dad, by the way, he lives in Florida. And that picture down there, that was taken in Miami while I was there. My home, eight bedroom, Christmas tree up there, massive, 10 foot high. Lounge number one, lounge number two at the bottom, other Christmas tree, and there's my daughter again. Outings. Everything that people want in the glamorous lifestyle, right? Champagne, boats, pool parties. I used to live in Chelsea Stadium, right at the top, looking down into the stadium. And I always got tickets for the events. Now, I don't know if you've ever sat in the area right above the TV camera, but it's probably the best spot in a football stadium to sit. You see everything perfectly aligned. Got Frank Lampard there as well, Jamie Clarkson, all the celebrities hanging out. And that view there, that was from the top of a flat. And of course, award ceremonies. Through work, doing good work, you win awards, glamorous, as always. Except, I was far from being happy. Why? Because that wasn't me. Everything I did to maintain that lifestyle was against what I believed in. And it was not me really deep inside. This is who I am. I grew up in Germany, in case you wondered where my accent was from. And uh, I grew up in a social estate like this. So, um, small flat. Actually, so small, we had two bedrooms. One of them for my brother, one of them for me. And my parents didn't have a bedroom. Basically, for eight years, they slept in the living room on a couch so that we could have separate rooms. Amazing for them to do, and really grateful for them to do that. Food, ooh. Look, we were never that poor that we had no food on the table, and I think, well, I'm really, really grateful for that, definitely, um, but the options were always cheapest and quickest. My mom, she would work multiple jobs. My dad, uh, it's really hard to say this, but yeah, he worked as well, but he basically spent all the money. Spent it on friends, uh, going out, drugs. During my time between five and 16, my dad was in jail twice. And um, yeah, it was all really, really tough. And you know, although I love both parents very much, it was an easy time. Don't get deceived by um, how these look out on the box. This is actually what they look like on the inside. And um, maybe some of you in the room have experienced these, and especially these, which are essentially fish with a crust around it. The worst thing is when they're undercooked and you have raw, fishy, gooey stuff in the middle, and then just a crust around it, it's just not nice. But you know, look, that was life growing up. McDonald's. I'm sure you've all been there before. Um, my five-year-old daughter, she came to me when I was about, uh, when she was, I think, two or three, and she just started speaking. She said to me, Daddy, Daddy, I want to I wanna go to the restaurant. And I said, I can't swear, I'm sorry. I'm probably going to swear a little bit later on. Um, I said, what? Restaurant? McDonald's. That was a luxury for me. Yeah? I went there maybe every three months or something. She wanted to go to the restaurant. Mental. So... What, is, what does this all have to do with you? You've probably sat here, you know, it's all entertaining. Maybe some of you thought I was going to take it all off. Um, soon you'll all be making decisions about your future, right? You're probably thinking about it now. This is why you're here as well. You're thinking about what are the things that you really want to do. The problem is that with a lot of those decisions, money does often play a major role if you let it. And you'll have questions like, can I afford to go to uni? If I come out of uni, will I have massive amount of debt? Or will that course that I will go on to get me the highest paid job so I get onto the property ladder really, really quickly, become financially independent? All those things that we're told in a system where money is basically the solution to happiness. But the problem is, and believe me, because I've been there, 
that journey alone is not going to make you happy in the long run. So what I want to do today is I actually want to give you three practical tips, three things, very simple, that you can take away today. And essentially, they will help you live a life, not just now, but also in the future, of long-lasting, sustained happiness. And I want to give you those tips that you can take away straight away. Okay? Those things will help you do three things. One, either get a job that you really, really love, do that course that you really, really want to do at uni, or potentially build the business of your dreams, which I'm personally building at the moment. So why listen to me? I've had both. I've had failures and I've had successes. I've failed two businesses, and one of them was because of the fact that I was trying to maintain a lifestyle which I really couldn't afford. So every time I was making money out of the business, I was drawing it out and putting that into the lifestyle. And it became really, really stressful. It became so stressful that all the business, the only reason the business ended up existing was basically generate money to supply clothes, house, uh, holidays, all these things. And I wasn't happy because I was constantly stressed. Now I run a successful business, helping thousands of agency owners around the world run a really, really good business. And this is the first time in my life that I stand up here in front of you, and I'm truly happy. I'm really happy, and I'm aligned 100% with the things that I believe in personally and the career path that I've taken now. The other reason why you should listen to me is I know about 10,000 people. I know 1,000 people of those quite well. I know 100 of those really, really well. A lot of them are really rich. So rich, it's ridiculous, right? The problem is I see patterns in those of them that are happy and the ones that aren't happy. And the ones that are happy definitely do these three things that I'm going to tell you today. Okay? Ready for it? Let's do it. <laughs> More nakedness, eh? Not enough of that. Um, true story, actually. This guy, uh, it did, did exist uh, where I grew up in Frankfurt. So he was a nudist. He would walk around naked all the time. It was a bit weird. You know? He'd stand in the cold with his headphones at the traffic light and cars would almost crash. Um, but I'm obviously not telling you to go out and become nudist or anything like that. Um, the reason why I'm telling you this is because one of the things I find amazing about this guy is that he realized that underneath all this clothes, underneath everything, all this social media crap that we have, right? all of these different things that we put out there, create an editorial of our life, we all bleed the same blood. We all breathe the same air. We're all the same. You'll get at some point to your life where you've probably gone through every single emotion that you can go through, and everyone will go through those emotions. And then it's really important just to realize that and find out what is it, what is it about yourself? Like, what's special about yourself, right? And the first step that you should do is not be ashamed about where you're from. Yeah? I used to be ashamed constantly of the fact that I didn't have money. I would make up stories. I would tell my friends who had more money than me than, oh, my dad owns this, my dad owns that. They all knew my dad didn't own anything. Right? They all knew my dad was constantly getting into trouble. But I thought that's my only way to be accepted by them. And they probably didn't even care as much as I cared. At uni, I, I taught myself how to do web development and design. So I was building websites and sold, sold them, made money with that. All of that money, I could, probably could have done really great stuff with. Lovely experience. Instead, I went to clubs. I used to spend like two, three grand on a stupid, I don't know, table in a club. And the funny thing is, all the people that I was with on that table, all showing off with the champagne and the fireworks, if you've ever seen that before, you know, they've had exactly the same issues. They were all trying to show off, but when they went home, just like me, they lived the next two weeks off rice and pasta in their small little one-bedroom flat, right? Pretending to be something or not. Later on, I met my ex-partner, so the, the, the lady that you saw in the pictures, and she had come from a wealthy family, so I felt a lot of pressure to constantly maintain that lifestyle. And I would do all these things for her. And ultimately, like I said before, my business actually ended up failing. Not because of her, but because I was not being myself. I was not true to myself. I didn't put a stamp in and said, 
I need to be happy. I need to be me. I need to live, and I need to understand where I come from. So, this is me swearing, sorry, teachers. Um, I got expelled twice from school, so I have a tendency to piss off teachers. Um, think of something right now that you love, but others in the past have made fun of. Just think about something right now. I hope you all have at least one thing. And now stop giving a shit of what people think. Yeah? Stick to your guns. Stick to the things that you believe in. It's so important. That's what makes you individual. When you're applying for jobs, when you come out of uni, or when you come out of school, whatever you're going to do, the employers, the good employers, and I speak to thousands of employers, they look for that uniqueness. They don't want the same CV over and over again. They'll just glimpse over that. They look for that uniqueness. They look for that thing that you stood up for while everyone else was laughing at you. That's how you will become yourself, your true self, and you'll be happy. Tip two. You, you probably hear this all the time, and unfortunately it's true. You know, I'm, I, I challenge you on it. Go and experience it yourself, and maybe you've already experienced that yourself. Uh, maybe you are from a family where there is a fair amount of money, and therefore you either saw this happen or not. But the reality is money is not the solution to long-lasting happiness, okay? I'm gonna try to give you a couple of examples of what that feels like. So, um, you know when you buy like a, like a new phone, or a shoe, you know, a new pair of shoes, or a handbag, or whatever it is, right? It's excitement, like you get that phone, and you're really, oh my God, like all the new things, and you're really excited, and you start texting all your friends, and messaging, you take pictures with your other phone, Suddenly you have two phones and you're showing up everywhere with two phones. Oh, I've got the new this and that. And it's really exciting. It's a great feeling, isn't it? Like, it's, it's, it's cool. I love that. I love that feeling as well. But in about three, four weeks' time, maybe two months, that feeling is gone. And then you want the next thing. And 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 that's not sustainable. That's not sustainable happiness. So what I want you to do when you're thinking about your next steps in your career, in, sorry, at school now, when, before you think about what you're doing in your course, think about, for example, if you're gonna go to uni, think about the situation without money being at the center of it. And this is gonna be really hard, and I challenge you on this, because you're gonna have lots of people that think they know better telling you, why do you wanna study that? Why do you wanna do this? Why do you wanna do that? It might even be your parents, it might be your siblings, it might be your best friends, right? But the thing is, this is your life. This is about you, your individual life. Don't give a shit about what others say, yeah? Because you need to do what you want to do and take money out of the equation because the problem is as soon as you put money into that, you're going to be doing that course that everyone's doing because, you know, it's going gonna, gonna to give you that high-paid job and whatever, and then you end up in that high-paid job, just like the new phone, and you're happy maybe for a bit, because you get loads of money coming in, and then suddenly it all dissolves, and you start looking for other happiness sources. If you're lucky enough to come from a family where there is a bit of money, you know, I talk a lot about it as if I hate it. I don't hate it. I think it's a great instrument. You can do a lot with it, right? And if you are from a family where there's money, and you've accumulated money in your own way, then use that as an instrument. Use that instrument to help, right? Maybe you can do some charitable things. It doesn't have to be as well, and you don't have to be ashamed as well of having money, because that's the opposite side of the spectrum, right? Just use it as an instrument to do things. This is my absolute favorite tip, and this is something I actually um, only learned immediately in the last 12 months, and um, that's because there were several things that I went through. Um, I went through a difficult uh, breakup, with my ex-partner, um, I also went through a breakup with my business partners, and uh, and also looked at the direction of the business. But it's so important to fall in love with the process, and it's equally as important, if not more, than the result. I'm super ambitious. I I like 
achieving goals, I love achieving goals. Like, I, I'll put millions of goals, whether it's sports, whether it's someone's challenged me in something, whether it's um, work-wise, I love achieving goals. I love setting next goals and pushing myself harder. The problem is, if you've just focused on that goal, and you focus so hard on it, if it doesn't happen, you're gonna be massively disappointed, because it didn't happen. And what you forget is the whole journey that took you there. For all I know, my business is gonna go bust in the next two years. I don't know, I can't control that. There could be millions of things happening. The economy drops, whatever. You know, I, I might not be capable of doing the work anymore. I don't know. But I'll look back at that point, from that point onwards, and go, actually, what's the, what are the amazing things I've learned over the last four years? So really think about that. With everything that you're gonna do, appreciate the journey every day. Every day that you're here at school or at home doing things, appreciate it. And then, of course, celebrate the goals as well. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. That's life. It doesn't matter. You, know, you move on. It's the process that's the exciting bit. Okay. So just a quick recap of that. Number one, be yourself. You know, remember that thing in your head that you love so much that people always make fun of. Stick to that. Love it. You'll attract other people who will love that as well. That's the amazing bit. And you start creating your own community. And before you know it, you've got something really cool going on, a proper movement, really. Money is not the solution to long-lasting happiness, right? So just remember that when you're looking at what courses you're gonna study, where you're gonna go work, what you're gonna do, just take that out of the equation. Restrict yourself, right? Just go, look, if money didn't matter, what, what is it that I really, really wanna do? And the third thing, appreciate the process, yeah? Just really fall in love with the process. So that's my presentation. I'm um, gonna round off with uh, a, a video because I always love to inspire people. I hope the sound is working. And, um, and then, of course, I'm available to chat to. I'll be around the whole day. Um, and actually, I think we probably have a little bit of time because it's 15 minutes. If you do have any questions for me, more than happy to, to answer them. But let's watch the video first. Yes, from the side door. Oh. So I'll leave the side door open, yeah. and I'll just be looking out like this. And when I see the right angle, I'm just going to step out. Oh, okay. Good? Uh -huh. Yeah. Check it again. There's no other jump to comparison. This is on a different level completely. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, pretty exciting. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, it feels surreal. And, you know, sometimes projects take years to manifest. Sometimes, hell, when I wanted to dive with great white sharks, it took me 16 years to dive with great white sharks without a cage. That's how long it took me to convince people to let me get out of a cage. Things can take forever, but I will continue and continue and continue. And that's just, that's how, that's, that's why I don't believe you can fail. You only fail if you give up. The second you decide, oh, I'm not going to do, uh, I'll just give up, that's you. You're the one making that choice. Right. You're the one choosing to fail. You have to make the decision to fail. Whereas if you don't ever make that decision, you say, no, I'm going to keep going until it freaking happens, well, then you don't fail. You're just in the process of making it happen. Things that I can do with that time or not. 